Hello, welcome back to the Evolution of Mom podcast. I really hope you enjoyed last week's episode on curiosity and how it can help you find your joy, find your passion, help you discern maybe what isn't serving you anymore. Curiosity can be such a powerful tool for our our minds, our life, our joy, so many things. And I think it's something that is underutilized. So I really hope you guys like that episode. Today, I really want to get into something that can be a very valuable tool when you're struggling with overwhelm, when you're struggling, even with sadness and things feeling really heavy. I know the world can feel really heavy right now. We're all going through our own individual things as well as everything else that is going on. And I know for myself, it has been a lot of ebbs and flows into seeing really beautiful things, into feeling really heavy and upset and what has been helping me is really focusing on the things that I can control. And this is something I want to bring to your attention as well. Focusing on the things that you have control over. So when things are feeling big and heavy and overwhelming, and there's a weight on your shoulders, diving back into your realm, your realm of control. What do you have control over? And honestly, the biggest thing you have control over is you. You have control over your actions, your reactions, what you decide to do with certain information, with anything that's brought to your attention, with things people say, with things people do to you. You are in control of what happens afterwards. You are in control of your response. You are in control of yourself. And I know that we can be in really what I'm going to call an unresourceful state sometimes when we're in these more heightened emotions. It can be very unresourceful for us to pull into a moment of control and into a moment of really discerning what we're going to say and how we're going to react. And so in those moments, if you haven't had enough time or awareness to practice control, to practice positivity, kindness, and growth and things, when you're in these unresourceful states, it's really important to communicate that to someone instead of feeling justified in whatever comes out of you because of the state you're in. So for example, when I am in an unresourceful state, when I am unresourceful state and I know that I am, and I know that I don't have the capacity to do, say, think or feel certain things. What has been so helpful for me, for Chris, for my family is that I say that out loud. It can be very uncomfortable and very hard to do. It puts us in a very vulnerable space, but saying it out loud to your partner is a big one that I am not in a very good space right now. And I don't want to say or do something that is going to come from that space that is directed at you when it shouldn't be. A lot of us get into very consistent patterns of when we're in an unresourceful state, we let that come out onto other people. And I think it's time we kind of start reeling that in and having a sense of responsibility for that and bringing it back to, we have control over that. But when we don't, if we don't have those skills yet, or if we don't even have that resource in that moment, because you're so heightened to just communicate that it's okay to admit that something is going on with you. It's okay to say, well, sorry is a big one when we know that something that came out of us was because of something we're going through, not because of what another person is doing. We can say sorry, and we can really express that this is why this is happening. You're sorry that it happened. But even before you get to the state where you maybe need to apologize is to come into a place of, hey, I don't know if I have space for this right now. I don't know if I'm going to be a very resourceful person for what we're talking about right now. I don't know if I can be a positive environment right now. I need to go have some space for myself. I need to go for a walk. I need to have a glass of water and go maybe read a book or whatever it is that can bring you into that space. I really encourage you to find what that is because that's a really good place to start. 
you know, having control over, over our actions. And then as time builds and as we can accept what can be a hard truth is that we are in 100% control of those kinds of actions, responses, and things we can move forward and even communicate that as well. I've had talks with Chris where I say, you know what, normally this is what I would respond with, or this is what I feel like I want to respond with, but I know that that's not helpful or going to push us forward or in the right direction. It might be hurtful. I don't know what to fill that with yet, but it is something I'm working on. I am working on having more control over these negative emotions and learning to have control that, or yeah, learning to have control over the fact that I get to choose what emotions I have. And I know that can be hard to wrap your head around. And I know that that can be a hard truth because when we're heightened, they're all over the place. And I understand that. But even outwardly in the world, I think we all need to focus more on kindness. I'm seeing a lack of that lately. And that is something we have control over. And when we see something in the world that we think there needs to be more of, all of that change starts within us as well. We are responsible and have control over our portion of that. So when I look to see more kindness in the world, I make sure that I am being as kind as I can possibly be. When I want to see more love in the world, I make sure I am being as loving as I can possibly be. And I want to make sure that I'm training my brain to see those things as well, because there's always both. I know maybe we've talked about this in previous episodes, but you have this very spectacular superpower tool in your brain called your reticular activating system. And it shows you exactly what you want to see. It shows you what it thinks you want to see. So if you go into a grocery store and you're saying things like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go into this grocery store. Everyone is so rude, so unkind. So this, this, and this, that's what you're going to see. But if you step into a grocery store and you know in your heart that there's kindness out there and that there are still people out there doing good things, that's what you're going to see. I love that analogy. That's one I heard from Ed Milet, and he's spectacular, by the way. If you haven't heard any of his stuff, I highly recommend it. But your reticular activating system, for example, when you get a new vehicle or you're thinking of getting a new vehicle and it's one you feel like you haven't really seen much of, and then all of a sudden you see them everywhere. Or when I was pregnant, all of a sudden there was baby shows everywhere on TV. Where did these baby shows come from? How amazing is it that right now, as I'm pregnant, the world knows that I need more baby shows on TV. Note the fact is that they were always there, but now my brain's primed to be looking for it because that's what it knows I have interest in, in that moment. So when we're priming ourselves to have more of these emotions and to see more of these things, it's really important that we train our brain to do so. And it's about honestly talking to yourself and, and putting belief in that there is kindness, there is good, there is love. But again, when we come into those moments where maybe someone is in that unresourceful state and they're being that way towards you, there has to be a level of grace as well. Because again, we choose how we respond to that. We can choose to heighten and to rise to the occasion, or we can choose to understand that, you know what, maybe they're having a really hard day and that actually has nothing to do with me. And I can respond in kindness or by walking away or by just choosing my response better. And that's really hard sometimes (laughs) because sometimes, believe me, I get it. It would be way easier to bring to someone's attention, like, Hey, you're being a butthole right now. Or, you know, and you know what, when it's in your intimate relationships, it's actually okay to point that out. If it's coming from a proactive space, if you're saying, Hey, you know what? I don't appreciate how you're talking to me. I don't appreciate what you're saying, but I think maybe you have something going on here. Is this really about me? Is this about what you have going on? You have to navigate that a little bit, but Again, it starts with you. When the people around you see you putting yourself in resourceful states or at least communicating when you're not, that always ripples out. 
right? We talk about that a lot here on the evolution of mom is that what you do ripples out into those around you, especially your most intimate relationships. And when we want to see big change, that big change has to come from within us. It has to. Hard truth sometimes, but we have more control than I think we think we do a lot of the times. So when it comes to a state of overwhelm, a state of unresourcefulness, what can you do? What can you focus on that you have control over? And what can you let go that you don't? If there's big things weighing on you, maybe they're completely out of your control and you need to control your response to it, how you control your environment around what's bothering you, that you have space for, that you can control. When there's big, heavy things going on, it's, it's one of the most valuable tools that I can give you is to dive into something at home, dive into a positive conversation with someone, give yourself a moment. I love, you know me, I love having a hot tea (laughs) or snuggling with my children and just feeling safe in my own environment is a really big one for me is I like to focus on what makes me happy and safe feeling in my own home, in my own environment with my community right now. And that grounds me and brings me back down to a realm of control when things feel out of control. So I encourage you to maybe make a list of what is overwhelming you right now. What is upsetting you? What could there be a conversation around? That really helps me too, is there's things where when I make my list, there's things that I know that I can step into with Chris, or I can step into with my mentors, with my coaches, or I can step into with someone in my community, or even just with my mom. Sometimes there are things on that list of overall where I can be like, Hey, I'm going to talk to this person about that. And they're going to help me even out this load, or at least I know, help me give a positive perspective on it or a solution driven perspective on it. And then some things like the state of the world right now, I don't have control over that. I don't, but I have control over what that looks like in my home. I have control over what that looks like from me and with my grace and my compassion and my kindness. Oh, I'm getting emotional because it does get very heavy, especially the world right now. And I know that everywhere is, is different and everywhere has its own levels and, but it doesn't matter because what you're going through is true to you. What I'm going through is true to me. And there's no difference in grandness or, or competition of whose is worse because our own experiences are, are very specific to us. And so if you're feeling upset and overwhelmed and, and hurt by things that to someone else don't seem so big, you need to Uh, be okay with the fact that you are in this moment of overwhelm and things for a reason, even though it might not be as big, and I'm using air quotes here, as someone else's problems, it doesn't mean yours are less than. It doesn't mean yours are not valid. And so again, bringing that back to grace, individuality. We can trust and know that everyone has their own stuff going on and that we only have control over ours and we only have control over the reactions we have to others. But know that your feelings, big or small, in whatever it is that you're going through are very valid and that it's okay to have those overwhelming pity party moments that's totally okay. Those moments are actually really important. Instead of stuffing it down and suppressing it and not feeling it or letting it go, that's just going to create this invisible weight on you. It's going to sink onto your shoulders, into your gut. It's actually way better to dive into those feelings, even if it's just for a moment, right? Pity parties are great, but we don't want to live there. But they can show us so much. I had a good ugly cry yesterday, day before, day before. And I almost didn't let myself have that moment. I tried too quickly to spin into positivity and into 
um, how it was a good thing, how I can, you know, get myself out of it. What can I focus on that I can control right now? But it seemed too quick. And so I stepped back and I let myself have that moment. I let myself experience all of those feelings I was having. And I ugly cried, <laughs> like in my husband's lap, ugly cried, but it was so therapeutic. It was, it was so important to do because now those feelings, which I'm obviously still dealing with a little bit as I cry, <laughs> but those feelings can be acknowledged and I can really dive into what they are. What was that feeling of overwhelm? What was it that tipped the iceberg that made me feel like I need to let it all out? And so I really encourage you to have those moments because they can be so clarifying and they can be so enlightening into what really is bothering you. And then you can decide what action you can take. What about that? Do you have control over what about it? Can you let go? And those moments really help. So dive into those pity parties when you need to. My advice is don't stay there long though. Be there so you can feel what it feels like to to understand what it is that's bothering you and to know where you don't want to be anymore. The pity party is a beautiful place to discover where you don't want to be, where things aren't serving you, what is weighing on you. It's really important to be able to dive into that space, but you have to be able to get out. You have to, you have to be able to get out. You can't live there. And when we live in those states, it just creates this whole feedback loop of stress hormones. And, you know, we get into fight or flight and we can't easily ebb back into that rest and digest, which your fight or flight state is beautiful. It's there for a reason. So we need to dive into it when we need to, like I did in that moment, I needed to have that moment so that I could take a deep breath and ebb back into a bit of that rest and digest those ebbs and flows are very important. And as women, especially, we tend to live in more of that state of stress and live in that state of heightenedness and overwhelm. And we, we do that a lot because we keep stacking our stresses. We keep not dealing with them and piling them all on. And our body just builds and builds and builds that cortisol builds and builds and builds those stress hormones. Then it turns into lack of sleep, gut issues. It's like this whole thing. So I encourage you to dive into those heavy moments when you need to take a deep breath, figure out what's putting you there, dive into what you can control and what you can't control in that situation. Focus on what you can focus on how you can bring joy and light to those moments and go from there. Learn to get yourself from an unresourceful state into a resourceful state and communicate when you're in that unresourceful state. And then remember that you have control over yourself, your reactions and how we treat others. So I just really encourage you to have more grace right now, have more kindness, especially towards yourself <laughs> and to other people right now because the world is weird. So yeah, dive in, do that for you and do that for those around you. <laughs> Thank you as always so much for being here. I want you to know that you are so worthy of whatever it is you're feeling. You are so validated in whatever it is you're going through that it's okay. And you can always ask for help. You can always express what you're going through. And if you don't have someone, find me. Send me a voice message, rant all you need to. I would love to be a safe space for you there and to help you and guide you out of those moments with some little tips on some self-care. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Have a great day.